Good morning and welcome to Bethany. Morning. This morning, uh, I want to share with you what's happening this week. On Thursday, whether you can walk or just sit or how you do this, you could go to the library between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning, the Kilso Library, and you could stuff packets. It'll be part of God's work, our hands, and all are welcome. Bethany is the only church in Kelso Longview that supports United Way in this project. And all are welcome. Right now we only have a couple people signed up. The important thing you have to do is fill out the insurance form, uh, which then negates United Way from being responsible for any accidents. So if you would please see Pastor after the service, uh, she's going to print those and we'll give one to you and you could just stick it out. Our way back from Ireland, we'll pick them up and deliver them to the United Way office on Wednesday and then we'll be all prepared for Thursday. So come join us. We're going to sit in the library and we're going to stuff the packets uh, for the library as our God's Work, Our Hands project. I need to tell you that if you get there at nine, a man named Eric will open the mall gate for you so you can get in because the library doesn't officially open until 10. So get there any time between nine and 10 and help us out. Thank you. Okay, well, good morning. Morning. How is everyone today? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doors doing well. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. And uh, we are in moving into the fall busy season, which turns quickly into Advent and into November, which is always a really busy month. So we're just so grateful to see you today. And we know. We know this is, for some, a start of a very busy time. Um, we have quite a few announcements today. So today we have an in-person Bible study. It's starting, we're starting on the book of Mark, and it'll be in the faith room about 11.15. And um, that will be on Sundays in person, but there'll be an um, online version of it if you can't come in person. There's an online version that started on Friday, at 10, and those are at 10.30. So um, that is what is happening there. And we have kind of a normal schedule, which is nice. We have our women's Bible study back and, and the moments at the lake at 1.30 this week. Um, duct tape on Thursday. And as always, you're always welcome to come for coffee hour, but we'd love a helping hand as well. And we do have the day of caring. Um, do we know, is that like 9 to 12? Is that, it goes 9 to 12. Okay, so uh, so we do have the day of caring as well. Oh. Council has been moved at 3 o'clock on Wednesday. Oh, on Wednesday, on Thursday. On Thursday. Okay, and council has moved to 3 o'clock on Thursday, and there is a, a mini council retreat on Saturday. Um, from there, we have Rally Day on next weekend. So next Sunday, we're going to have a potluck, so bring something when you come. Um, and we're going to have it outside, but we're going to use the upper parking lot. So please, if you're able-bodied, please park in the lower parking lot. Um, and if you feel that that's too far to walk, we'll, we'll keep part of the parking lot open for you. Um, and prepare for whatever weather, as long as it's not raining, we'll be outside. So uh, sun is hopeful and um, wind is a possibility. So uh, please prepare for that. And we will have the food outside. We found that last time we thought the ground was a little bit unstable. So we thought this might, we're trying this. So we'll hopefully. Bring your own chair. Yeah, that'd be great. George? Are we doing barbecue? Not this time round. You have to bring a dish. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, potluck. Yeah, okay, so all that. So you have to bring a dish. <laughs> so this is the Lutheran potluck. We're going back, back to our roots. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. Oh, um, oh, so for our Zoomies, uh, it'll be on Facebook, but it won't be on Zoom for the outdoor service. And um, again, we'll have the Bible study. And then October 1st, we're going to have a pet blessing service. We'll be in the fellowship hall. Um, we'll have our small seeds and sprouts do the blessing as they did last time. And um, it's a lot of fun. So leashed animals, great. Creepy, crawly, slithery things, caged. And, you know, if they flutter or fly away, probably caged as well. So um, I'm, I'm excited. It was a lot of fun last, last year, and we look forward to meeting your fur babies and so bring them with you. And, it, and you can also bring, if you feel that that is not appropriate for your pet, then um, I've heard some have misbehaviors that people are a little afraid of. Bring a, bring a picture, and we'll bless the picture. So we'll do that. That's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, and then we have fish coming up. Uh, so we have fish coming up on October 9th and 10th. And uh, so volunteers are needed on those days. And I am to announce also that Jim Woodworth's memorial service is at 2 p.m. on Wednesday the 13th at the convention center. So uh, does anyone have any other announcements? Oh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So they need they need help. Please come and help. It's it's a wonderful service, and we're we're really blessed to be a part of that. All right. With that, uh, let us uh, let us just take a moment to uh, clear our minds and our and our open our hearts and prepare for service. The Lord be with you. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God now and forever, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love as God loves you. Amen. Amen. Oh, you may be seated. Let us sing. <clears throat> stars, loud rushing planets, sing to the Lord a new song. Hail wind and rain, loud blowing snow storm, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things, I too shall praise this with a new song. Trumpet and pipes, loud clashing cymbals, sing to the Lord. Song, harp, light, and light. 
sing to the Lord a new song. Athletes and band, loud cheering people, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. I too sing praises with a new Good morning. morning. Pastor has asked me to um, say a few words before we consider the call of Abraham. As I turned the calendar page, I found it was September, but I also found that on the 10th, today, is Grandparents' Day. Who knew? But how are we going to celebrate this day when I think at Bethany, we've all had grandparents? And most of us are grandparents. So what do we do about this special day for us? So I happened to come across Proverbs 13, 22. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Or another way, a person is good if they leave an inheritance for their children's children. So I don't think God had in mind that we put a big dollar sign in our will for our grandkids. Maybe he had in mind, what is our spiritual legacy for our children? So to answer that, I'll just refer back to Pastor Susan's sermon last Sunday. And I'll quote from that, where she shared with us what to do as grandparents for our children's children. Quote, Moses answered, as most of the prophets do, here I am, or here am I. Then she gave us the Hebrew word for here I am. This is a concept of saying, this is the concept of saying here I am. It means that I'm ready to do anything God asks before actually knowing what the task at hand. It is a typical biblical pattern. God calls, the person responds enthusiastically, then they find out the assignment at hand, and then they act like Jonah. They want to run away with excuses flowing, but they end up doing what they're called to do anyway. Moses had plenty of excuses, but God threw the ball back in his court. Now Moses had a very long journey in front of him, one that lasted him the rest of his life. And for Moses, it was, as for the other prophets, the original agreement. Here I am. So at Bethany, how do we care for our children's children in Bethany and in our community? Well, We adopted two grade schools, and we provide food for the hungry and sometimes homeless children. We give them food to last over the weekend and on holidays when they're not in school. We give them backpacks and school supplies when school starts in the fall. We have an angel tree at Christmas to provide them presents. We bring food for fish so that we can feed hungry families. We have emergency funds for the hungry. We have a Sunday school of small seeds or small seeds and sprouts. Pastor has a confirmation class. And we ask the children's children to participate in our worship. <clears throat> but on top of this, and in spite of this, I received this report from the State Department of health this past month, where, and the title of this was, Where Can We Find Hope During the Epidemic of Hopelessness Facing Our Children? We have an adolescent mental health crisis in our state, in our community, and it's summed up in three basic facts. 60% of our youth have depression or anxiety that disrupts with their life, with their home and their school. 
20% need professional help because of the diagnosis of depression and anxiety has started to verge towards what is it? Is there anything worth it? Feelings of suicidality. And then 9% as these feelings of anxiety and depression deepen and darken, 9% have attempted suicide. So this Saturday, the council and pastors led by Pastor Susan will have a retreat on hope. And how are we going to address hopelessness of our youth? Our opening prayer, as it is, as the council has designated for Bethany Lutheran, our opening prayer will be now shown on the screen. And we can pray this uh, together. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. just going to add in that there are some cards on the table and in the in the fellowship room or some blank pieces of paper that you can write a note to those you love to your grandparents to your grandchildren and that's a great way to celebrate today share your faith with them Our lessons for today begin with Ezekiel, chapter 33, starting at verse 7. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now, you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us and we waste away because of them, then how can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Warnings, warnings. Our psalm is from Psalm 119, the longest one we have, and we're just taking a portion, starting with verse 33, and would you read responsively? Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I shall keep your teachings. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. Our next reading comes from Romans. Commentary. The obligation of Christians is to love one another and so fulfill the heart and the goal of law. Clothes make the per person as we put on 
the Lord Jesus Christ and live today in light of the future God has in store for us. Romans 13, beginning with verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the, lo the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than we when we came, became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and genesis, jealousies. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today comes from Matthew 18, chapter, or chapter 18, 15 through 20. Jesus said to the disciples, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such as one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated. Good morning. Grace and peace from God, the Creator, and Jesus, the one who taught us about love and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our Romans text today, we start out with a bang. Owe no one anything except to love one another. Yes, that's a lovely verse. And wouldn't it be nice if we could manage just doing that? It sounds like such a simple verse, such a simple thing to do. But we all know that it isn't easy to extend, always easy to extend love to others. And it also can be just as hard to receive love back. For whatever reason, we seem to shy away from truly loving others. Sure, there are reasons, most of them not great. Some excuses hold prejudices and hold judgments of others. And sadly, some people just do not know how to love. There are some reasons that are legit, like extending love to some people may not be wise as there are people who will abuse or take advantage or cause hurt and harm. And we do need to know the difference. Paul's letter to the Romans was written to encourage and guide Christians in living their lives formed by the Spirit in Jesus Christ is primarily a text directed on daily, ordinary living. Paul uses words not to define, but to create a call to mindfulness. We live in a hurried and harried world. We rush about from task to task and from people to people and place to place. 
And we overlook how each task and each place and each person contributes to the whole of our lives, to God's whole story that is taking shape around us. Now, a mindful approach would be to hold an appreciation for each thing and each activity and each person that crosses our path and to slow down to love and to appreciate what is before us and the person in front of us. Paul says, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. He says, the commandments are summed up in this, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Now, these words are not new. Paul is merely repeating the words that Jesus taught and reminding the people that love is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus in Matthew chapter 22 was asked, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus does a lot of work to make love a focal point of his ministry. He teaches and preaches, heals and works miracles and confronts authorities. We watch Jesus challenge and overturn customs and practices that overall put the law above love. He extends and expands love by welcoming and including all people in discipleship and into the kingdom of God. Jesus refused to accept the world's labels of people as unclean, as outcast, as unworthy, or even as sinner. He touches the lepers. He touches the dead and raises them to life. He touches the blind man and puts mud on his eyes. He touches them. He touches the untouchable. He allows Mary, the sister of Martha, to sit at his feet as a disciple and reaches out to Peter when he climbs out of the boat and then loses faith. He is the good shepherd that calls to his sheep and they respond, not because because they know his voice. And the most loving act of all was going to the cross for all those who have sinned and fallen short. You and me. We make spreading love into the world so much harder than it ever needs to be because we sit and evaluate who is worthy of our love. We categorize each person into yes or no. So just be kind. We can extend our hearts to love more people. We can redefine our definition of neighbor. We can do that because God has loved us all the way to the cross and back. Love of one another understood through the lens of the cross means giving up our claims to ourselves and our claims over others. This passage is telling us that the ability to love is the amazing force that Jesus Christ has turned loose in the world by his resurrection. Therefore, love has the power to radically change the world. Jesus changed the world through his life, death, and resurrection. Surely we too can change the world by opening our hearts to love others. We see this concept echoed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, also written by Paul. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient 
And love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And that's the thing, right? There is plenty of love to give, and it doesn't end. Even in death, love does not end. We know this from the grief we feel when we miss someone. If love ended at death, we wouldn't have those feelings for that person anymore. And that is the coolest thing, because love triumphs death every single time. And the grief we feel, even though it is an unwanted emotion, shows us that love is there. It is always there. We love because God first loved us. And if we have Christ's love in us, and we do, his death on the cross for our sins and his resurrection filled with the promise of new life was an act so filled with love that there are simply no words. And that kind of love just doesn't go away or get used up. Jesus teaches us that our neighbor is the one who is in front of us, despite nationality, economic status, or gender identity, or whatever else we categorize people into. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling the fulfilling of the law. So how do we love our neighbor? How do we love the ones in front of us? How do we love the ones beyond those we see? Be like Jesus. Expand your hearts and your definitions of who your neighbor is and sow love like seeds. I am sure you can find someone who can use more love today. And as we do that, we remember this other great verse about love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So go forth in love and peace today and expand your neighborhood by offering love to all. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We are singing scripture. This song is based off of Romans chapter 15. Christ accepted you Accept one another also. Christ accepted you. Accept one another also. That you may with one accord glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you may with one accord glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ accepted you, accept one another, accept one another, accept one another also. We're going to go back to the top and do the whole song again. Christ accepted you. Here we go. Christ accepted you, accept one another also. Christ accepted you. Accept one another also, that you may with one accord glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you may with one accord glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ accepted you. Accept one another, accept one another, accept one another also. Please rise as we speak our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we lift up Morocco in the earthquake yesterday. And we lift up all those in spaces of hurricanes as Hurricane Lee makes ground and also in other hurricanes in other places. We pray, God, for the children as they return to school for their safety and protection. God of grace, yeah, holy and gracious God, we, we pray for our earth. We pray for the creation that you have made. We pray for those, our beautiful trees that still stand in drought status as we see the really dry leaves fall to the ground earlier than their time. God of grace. We pray for those who are hurting God, those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who face abuse, those who face a love that is not wanted or one that hurts. God of grace, what else would the people of God like to pray for today? pray for Bill's son and daughter-in-law and all those facing such hard troubles of hospital and dementia. God of grace. in uh, John's mother and into that as well. God of grace. And with, uh, with that, uh, God, you know our prayers in our hearts that we, we lift to you and those that we lift upon our lips. We know you hear us and you hear the prayers that we speak. God of grace. Yeah. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us take a moment to show a sign of peace to our neighbors here today.
we thank you. Um, we mentioned a lot of things. Phyllis mentioned many things that we do here at Bethany for children and for feeding the hungry. And we're so thankful for those things that we can provide through the love of, love of Christ. And so we thank you for your offerings and your time and your talent and your treasures because all of those go into these ministries and it allows us to continue these ministries as well. So we thank you for that. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when the world made perfect through your wisdom. All our sins and sorrows will be no more. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours. O God, O living one with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he broke it, and he, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this wine, we remember our Lord Jesus, until he comes. Christ has died, and Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen. Please speak with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today we, we talked about love. And for this church, we talk a lot about love, and we talk a lot about grace. And so we want to infuse that into the world, because Jesus lives in us. And the sacrifice was too great not to pour love back into the world. And we're blessed to have that love to give. We're blessed to see and understand that we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's not easy, but we can try. And the idea is to expand who is our neighbor. And so today we, we give thanks. And we pray for those in need. And we pray for those who are hungry. Not just for food, but for spiritual food. The spiritual love of Jesus Christ. That we all have in us, and then we can all share it and give it away. The table is set, and you are all welcome to it. For our friends online, this is the body of Christ, 
and it is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ, and it is shared for you. Come, the table is set. You're welcome to.
life-giving God. Through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God of peace, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please rise and let us sing, bind us together. <clears throat> We are the family of God. We are the family of God. 